seismic shifts on Beacon Hill as Charlie Baker decides not to run for a third term. And suddenly, the 2022 election cycle in Massachusetts is wide open. How will it shake out? Let's go on the record. From WCVB Channel 5, the inside word from Washington to Beacon Hill. Today's newsmakers are going on the record. Welcome to OTR on this Sunday morning. I'm Ed Harding along with News Center 5's political reporter Janet Wu. What a week it has been. What a week and a year it will be. And our guest this morning could soon have a front row seat to all of the state house drama. She is Lydia Edwards. She's a candidate for the open state Senate seat in the first Suffolk Middlesex district. The preliminary election is December 14th. She's a Democrat, currently a member of the Boston City Council. She holds a graduate degree degrees uh, from American University and Boston University. Great to see you. Thanks for coming in. Thank you for having me. So um, your city council district seat is a, a good demographic mix of a lot of constituents, but the Senate seat you're running for is even more diverse. Are you as progressive as Michelle Wu and Elizabeth Warren, both of whom have endorsed you? Um, on some issues and on some issues, I disagree with them. Uh, Give me an example of where you disagree. The budget vote. The budget vote in 2020, I voted for uh, Marty Walsh's budget, and along with that, that meant I funded all part departments of the city, including the Boston Police Department. And uh, Michelle Wu and I disagreed. She did not vote for that budget. And what about the police department going forward? Do you think their budget should be shaved even more with more money going towards like um, social programs that are being touted by a lot of progressives? I you know, when it comes to the police budget, I've been very clear. I believe in fiscal responsibility. You know, one of the biggest reforms we're pushing for is overtime reform. And that is something that actually the police want as well as the people of Boston because they've gone over the overtime budget many times. But I've also been very clear. I want to bring to scale programs that already exist that are about healing, that are about alternatives to public safety. These are individuals who are street outreach workers. I want to give them a shout out. They're the hardest working people in Boston in public safety. They come unarmed to to murder scenes, to places where uh, gangs are about to do retaliation, and they stand in and heal. And so those kinds of programs, I want to bring a lot more resources to and bring them to scale throughout the entire city. And I think they could be a model actually for the whole state. So let's talk about the vaccine because it, it, it is here. We, we are living with it. Governor Baker has called for a digital vaccine verification system, and he insists that this won't lead to mandates. So two point question. Is the governor right that it won't lead to mandates? And what do you think of mandates? Are they necessary? Um, so two-part answer. Yeah. Uh, in terms of this leading to a mandate, I think it's more about clarity and, trans um, and uh, transparency. And what they're trying to do and what I've seen happen in other states and other countries is saying those who are doing the right thing should be rewarded for doing the right thing. I got vaccinated and so therefore if I prove I'm vaccinated, I'm, I want to move around the store free and uh, move around the store maskless. And I think it's trying to incentivize it more than mandate. Mm -hmm. And in terms of mandates, I, I, tend, to th I tend to favor them and especially in certain industries, in our hospitals, in our schools, in places where we have people coming together who are already sick or compromised. I definitely am concerned that if we don't have consistency, what you're going to find is that uh, school systems are, mm -hmm. are losing kids. So mm -hmm. you have private schools that don't have mask mandates, you have public schools that do, and then, you know, people just like, move across. And so I'm concerned about how we emerge from here from this pandemic in terms of equity. In, in, in where you are reaching, and you're in, in the state right. Senate district, it, it, each community has a different community requirement. Right, right. And at this point, that's the system that we have. Yeah. I just really think as, an, as a state senator, as a leader, uh, we're gonna, we have to accept what we have, but our goal is to see how we emerge together and fill in those po those potholes or those gaps, those gaps in terms of equities. And that's looking at the funds that are available, the billions of dollars that are coming down the pipe, and really making sure the the communities are centered and being able to determine where the money is going. There's a lot of healing to be done. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of jobs that we need to get back on track. There's a lot of education that we know we've lost, and we need to make sure that all of the kids, the parents, the workers are at the table to make sure that they can recover. As we sit here right now, Omicron is spreading yes. across the country, but South African leaders say travel bans are travel apartheid. Oh. Do you agree with that? Um, no, I don't. I think that, that, that we are trying our best to deal with a worldwide pandemic that moves very quickly because of how we travel. So I don't think that travel bans are a certain amount of apartheid, but I do understand when it comes to certain communities and certain countries where travel is so vital to their economic recovery. They're, they're naturally frightened that if we ban 
travel or tourism that they are going to go even further into debt or so on and so forth. So I do think it needs to be twofold. You need to have a travel restrictions or bans, but we also need to be talking about how we're helping these communities recover. And hopefully, as a world community, we can recover together and come up with uh, funds and necessary resources. And travel bans that include all countries, not just specific countries. Exactly. I, I, I want to talk about, about and I know this may sound very specific, but I, I, again, under the umbrella of we, we, the world that we're living in, we're just talking about Omicron, we're just talking about the, the virus itself. The state house is one of the few public buildings that is still closed to the public, one of the few state houses that is still closed in the entire union. This week, a middle school chorus and a band was refused access to even borrow chairs or use the bathroom when it sang holiday songs outside the building. In, 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 in any world, does that make sense? Uh, it, it is certainly confusing to me. I am on the Boston City Council, as you know, and we are back in person. Mm -hmm. uh, we have to demonstrate, we had to show that we were vaccinated, and we are, you know, when we are in person, we wear a mask. When we speak, we take the mask off. So we've managed to adjust. I do hope that we're getting to the point at the State House uh, that we are adjusting towards inclusion and adjusting towards coming back in person. I think if we're asking our kids to go to school, if we're asking people right. to go to work, right. that it's time that we come up with a process that is safe, that allows for the public to come in. But I do want to be clear, it isn't just them uh, coming to work. When they say open it up for the public, we don't know who's coming in, how they're coming in, if they're vaccinated, if they're not. They have hundreds, I'm sure thousands of people who come right. on a regular basis to the state house. So it's a process that also needs to be vetted in a way. Uh, not We don't have that many visitors at City Hall, for example. And so if they're opening up, they're trying to also, I think, balance public safety and the spread of Omicron or any other uh, vaccine at this, excuse me, any other um, pandemic disease right. at the same time. Well, I, and, and the only, the only uh, addition I'll, I'll add to that is what 15 18 19,000 people go in the garden to watch the Bruins and the Celtics there is a mask mandate in Boston I understand that mm -hmm. but they go into that building and not you know and that and that well I'm not disagreeing with you right I'm simply saying that they need they, they need to come up with a policy yeah. are they too late back to coming up with a policy yeah. that, no I wouldn't say they're too late I would say that s simply that they need to do it okay um, there right now Mayor Wu is in the process of trying to deal with mass and cast, trying to move the people out of the area, put them in safe places. Um, there was a proposal at one time to move some of the people there to a hotel in Revere, which is in the Senate district that you're running for right now. Mm -hmm. Would that have been a good solution to Boston's homelessness problem? No, that is not a good solution. They are not, they, we are talking about human beings and dignity. And that solution proposed by the acting mayor took away the humanity and dignity of people who are suffering from mental illness. This is a regional response. This is not past the buck response time. We need to stand up as a region and we need to say all of us, but for the, but for the grace of God, one of us or one of our family members could be on mass and cast right now. And we need to acknowledge that. We are no different, we are no better. So as a region, we need to come up with hubs. We need to bring to scale things that are already working, like a harbor, a recovery on the harbor, which is a regional response in East Boston, Meridian House. There are already wonderful areas and examples of how to get So no need to find spaces for any of these uh, people outside of Boston? Is no, that what you're saying? No, no, I said regional. So in so other words, you can see them being placed in facilities that are appropriate in Revere or in East Boston or other places. I see we don't have a choice but to come together and come up with resources that we all can share. That is called leadership. That is acknowledging that again, but for the grace of God, a mask and cast could be in any city at any time. If it's Boston now, it could be Revere tomorrow, it could be Winthrop. So right now, let's all come together and decide how we're going to deal with this. Bring our money together, bring our facilities together. The whole entire region needs to come together.